Good morning and thank you for joining us for another look at the newspaper headlines. My name is Felicity Ezewike and this is Off the Press. I'm joined via Skype by Tubosu Akeji, Reputation Manager. Pleasure to have you with us. Good morning and thanks for having me. Good morning. All right, we'll start with the Nation newspaper this morning. The big one is the WHO to begin drug trial in Lagos, Ogun, FCT, others. It has two riders. Buhari Oke's collection of Madagascar's cured drug. Minister, Island Nation's herbal drug plant in Nigeria. Prison rejects... Fashion Ortiz's daughter's murder suspect, baby sold for 130,000 naira. Just at the top of the paper, above the masthead, seven billion naira fraud conviction, no release order for Kahlo. Convert Catholic hospitals, others to isolation centers. You find details on page five. Why employers must get stimulus by NLC, TUC, give job priority. Okay, um, let's start with your take on the Madagascar situation um, and the drug trials. Um, I think it's a step in the right direction. And uh, it's uh, at, at this point in time when the whole world is trying to properly understand this very deadly disease, um, it's and if Madagascar has said they have not had any casualty and the uh, they've they've pinned that success on this um, um, drug or this syrup, I think is worth testing. Having said that, um, the, the, I, I understand what you know we're, the 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 WHO and all the health agencies are also trying to do to either take this through some type of trials, either technical um, or clinical trials. It's important to do that because for every drug there, there's al always one or two or if a couple of, you know, contraindications. And um, you want to be sure that you are aware of the contraindications of these drugs um, before you administer them. Unfortunately, time is not on our side. So um, I think the world of Nigeria is between the rock and the hard place. And... Um, but again, I think it's just worth trying, you know, either ways. Um, perhaps we could do both of them at the same time, you know, run the quick car trials or all the other trials that are necessary while still, you know, administering these drugs. If, you know, um, the, the data from Madagascar is anything to go by, no, you know, uh, mortality rate is at zero. Nobody has died from COVID-19, according to them. And if we can really, really establish that, I think that it will be necessary you know, for government to allow this, the trial, clinical trials and all the tests to go on as people start to use it. Okay, let's look at the Kalu situation. Um, on the day of the Supreme Court judgment, there was a statement allegedly signed by him personally, um, you know, appreciating the Supreme Court judgment. The assumption was that he has been released. In fact, some papers reported that he was in his home somewhere in Abuja um, after the Supreme Court judgment. And now we get this information that he is still at Kujay prison what, what, what is, I mean, what's your, how are you wrapping your head around the Supreme Court judgment, uh, Carl is still in detention, the possibility that, uh, in prison rather, the possibility that he's going to go back to the National Assembly? Um, so, anytime I have the opportunity to talk about the problems in Nigeria, uh, I always say that it's like an onion. You know, um, you remove one layer, then you find another layer under it. Uh, but one significant problem in Nigeria is weak systems and institutions. And there is no country that would go and succeed in that. And um, what you've seen in the issue of Kaluye, if is from my own perspective, is the, um, is the symptom or, you know, an indication that we have weak systems and institutions. Because if the Supreme Court, as you know, ordered... Um, the release of of Kalu and you know the prisons are saying that they have not re they have not received the information officially. Um, that is clearly you know what happens when you have weak systems and institutions. I mean, it he was in the media and all that. So the the, the 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 prison might actually be justified because if it has not been communicated to them officially, then they have a right to say that, oh, okay, we heard it in the media, but we've not seen it in fine print in black and white, and that's what's happening. 
And I think that it is very sad that we still have situations like that in Nigeria. And I'm hoping that, you know, um, things like this will be fixed because it's a no-brainer and, you know, the right thing will be done. If the Supreme Court, you know, have, um, have, 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 have declared him not guilty and supposed to go back to this, no reason why the prison should still be holding him. Yeah, I, I think he wasn't actually declared not guilty. The verdict was um, set aside because of the judge's uh, position moving from a lower court to a uh, higher court. But be that as it may, let's see what happens um, um, as the days go by. Um, there's another story here, why employers must get stimulus. This is from the NUJTUC. There is a whole lot of worry about the economy and uh, now the labor unions are coming in to say that employers are also eligible uh, for stimulus uh, pa packages so that they can uh, retain jobs. What's your uh, perception uh, on this? Um, I, that, um, I think that we have to look at what works for us as a country and not try to um, be a copycat of other climes where they are more stable and they have, you know, um, they are in a slightly different solution. Like I've said um, at different opportunities, that the COVID-19 pandemic economic effect is a two-edged sword. There are winners and there are losers, you know. And for a country like Nigeria, from my own perspective, um, I think the, the the pressure group should focus even more on the effective and um, unbiased distribution of the policy government as put in place first. There's, a, I think, a 50 billion naira um, 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 program with the CBN. How transparent and objective is that program going to be? Are the real people who have needs for it, are they going to um, succeed? One of the things that COVID-19 has taught us is how, you know, to run a more efficient business. Um, so the question is, we're going to start to see where the companies are cutting losses. So co co companies are cutting excesses. Yes, we understand that we have um, um, an eye on employment rate. But the fact remains that there are also some people on the winning side of this who are also still employing more people. And I'm not saying this directly. I know for a fact, you know, some companies who have had, you know, to expand their operations during this period because there's been an increase in demand for some of their own services. So I think that rather than, you know, go for an option where it looks like government is quote-unquote dashing out money, I think we should look at what will work in these our new normal, what is going to be more effective in our new normal, and not just you know just say um, you know almost like you have to just give everybody um, a free day. I think we should look at what is going to be more effective. All right, before we move on from the nation, let's take this uh, quick one that says Nigerians stranded abroad to wait um, uh, to no space to accommodate them, says government uh, to be flown back by local airlines. <laughs> Um, okay, so about I think it was last week. Um, um, so in the news, there have been complaints from government that the local airlines were a lot more expensive than you know the um, the uh, uh, foreign ones. And I think the the I think it was British Airways that brought the people from um, the UK, the Nigerians that needed to come back to Nigeria from the UK, and. If there are Nigerians that are stranded in diaspora, I would it would be perhaps a good guess to think that the news last week is probably the reason why we're having this delay, you know, to ensure that because there was a, some side of the argument we're saying that um, the government should actually patronize, you know, uh, the local airlines to do um, to perform this evacuation of Nigerians in foreign land, and the government is saying that the local airlines were way more expensive than the foreign airlines. So. It's a, it's, I think it's important for us to understand, you know, um, the problem there before, you know, we start to blame whoever uh, we choose to blame. And um, but whatever it is, I think government and the um, airline industry must quickly reach a middle ground so that because those Nigerians outside that day, lots of them are not are no longer finding it easy. There are quite a number of discrimination, especially in places like China, and it's important to you know quickly get them. Um, 
All right, let's see the punch and its headlines. What is punchy about it this morning? The Madagascar drug, uh, Madagascar COVID organic to be used when confirmed safe working. That's uh, PTF. It has uh, two riders. FG, WHO carrying out drugs trial in FCT, Lagos, Kanu, others, and CDC ask private laboratories to test suspected Nigerians free. Okay, we've taken a look at that. Uh, let's go to the top of the paper where we see a federal government sets up panel to revive a Jokuta steel plant. COVID-19 will worsen Nigeria's debt situation, says NESG. And their reps set modalities for NCDC bill public hearing. Egbim 10 power plants suffer gas shortage. Uh, those are some of the headlines on the Punch newspaper. Let's take a quick glance at the bottom to see what else is there. Uh, agency intercepts trucks with 30 armageries in Ogun. Court orders for future of ex presidential fleet commanders. Is that? That's about uh, 510 million uh, naira. Uh, we're, we've no court, we have no court order to release Kalu. Uh, that's um, a story we've taken a look at. And uh, some other uh, headlines here. Four to die by hanging uh, for murder in Ekiti. Uh, which of these um, comes to your mind um, as you want to talk about it? <laughs> Quite a number. Um, I'll first start with uh, maybe Ajao Kuta. Um, again, another committee after so many committees, you know, have been set up to fix Ajao Kuta. I just hope that very, very soon we actually will see results. And maybe we should just give up on this Ajao Kuta already. We've had the conversation too many times. Up, are we? You said what? I said we're not a nation that gives up, are we? <laughs> Well, at some point, you have to, you know, count your losses and know that there is, you know, there's, there's, there's really, there's really no, no, no need pursuing this part, you know. And that's sometimes the attribute of a winner. You have to know when to back down and then come back for another fight. I think that we flogged Ajakuta for too many times, and it sounds like a broken record. Like, it's even the reason why I want to get it out of the way quickly, because I don't know what's going to be different this time. We've signed contracts with different countries, or there's been announcement of signed contracts with different countries at different points in time. And we've not really seen any tangible results about Ajao Kuta. So what is going to be different this time? And I, I've read that news item. I'm sorry, I've not seen anything that's really you know, different at this point in time. Um, I just hope that we can make the best use of the facility, because it's a huge huge facility um, but there's something that we just keep you know getting wrong and there have been so many opinions about the problem is with who beauty the problem is that the technology is old you know there's been so many things so like i think we can just you know put past it um the news the the, the news on the power sector is one that um, also really, really caught my attention there uh, because again last week there the, the, there was complaints that um the discos were not taking off enough power from um, the um, from from the Jenkos. Uh, those are the owners of you know the the gas firing plant, and um, also in the same week there are complaints about the fact that the discos were losing seventy percent. The ATC and C losses were about seventy percent. I'm not sure of any business that would survive if they're losing seventy percent of their revenue and there was call for recapitalization you know of the power sector and all of that to say that you know there's a huge liquidity problem in the power sector uh, i think that it's about time even during this lockdown for government to really really look into the problem in the power sector and find a lasting solution to it nigeria is set to pay the cheapest um, 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 Nigeria's electricity is said to be the cheapest in the world, unfortunately. Um, again, another sector with an onion kind of problem. Uh, but, you know, these are investments that has been made into this sector, and government continues to put in more money to ensure that that place is succeed. I think we just need to face the problem once and for all and try all to right, solve it. So you let's... recall... Um, sorry to interject, but we really need to catch on to all the papers as well as quickly as we can.
All right. Okay, um, the Nigerian Tribune is next. Uh, the headline here is, we will vigorously monitor use of $3.4 billion IMF loan, COVID-19 donations. That's House of Reps speaking uh, to hold two-day public hearing on infectious diseases bill. And then it also says, CSOs call for proof of alleged diversion of palliatives, conditional cash transfer. Those are some of the uh, top stories on the Nigerian Tribune paper this morning. If you go to the very top of the paper, you will see FEC disbosses 1.95 trillion Naira in first quarter. That's NATI report. No 5G licenses issued yet. Uh, that's NLC. Um, there are more stories here. Amoteku is in the news. Uh, this time it is Amoteku. Lagos Assembly passes Neighborhood Safety Core Bill into law. And then troops kill uh, 17 bandits in Kaduna. Uh, your thoughts quickly. There are some other headlines you might need to go catch up later on. But for now, uh, Tubasu, uh, what's your take on this big one? We will vigorously monitor $3.4 billion IMF loan COVID donation. That's the House of Reps speaking. I think all of us should try <laughs> everything possible to vigorously monitor all the funds that are released at this period. Uh, because they are not... Some of them are actually not even donations. Those, the ones that are even donations are also important that they are used for the right thing. So not only should the politicians be the one to monitor it with the citizen, the CSOs must um, um, fight for transparency in the effective use of those funds. Because, for example, for the IMF fund, they come with a lot of conditions. And if we don't even pay our children's children, we'll pay you know, for, 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 for it. So it's very important that we monitor that it is used in the very, very right places. Okay, this Amoteku, a Lagos Assembly passes neighborhood a safety core bill into law. What's your thought on that? Um, um, I'm actually surprised that they're just passing that bill because um, I think we had gone past, you know, um, the issue of Amoteku a few months even before COVID-19, you know, changed our world as we know it. So um, I'm, not, I'm not sure how much, um, why that bill is just being passed, considering that um, a lot, Lagos had made a lot of commitment to the Amoteco um, um, initiative already. Okay, let's see if we can uh, squeeze in just one more paper, and that's this day newspaper. The big one here is COVID-19 Buhari directs validation of Madagascar herbal mixture efficacy. Uh, we've touched on that story a lot. There's a couple of writers uh, to it if you want to go take a look. Um, at the top of the uh, paper that's above the masthead, we have Amcom's recoveries from debtors rise to 1.1 trillion naira. Uh, sale of uh, Polaris Bank in work is work in progress. Um, Tubasu, Polaris Bank was just um, evolved a few years ago. What's this about its sale, uh, work in progress? What's your thought on it? Um, I think that the um, issue of uh, Polaris Bank, uh, which is former Sky Bank with Amcon, is actually one of Amcon's biggest success story. Um, you know, about maybe it's up to two or three years now after um, Amcon took over Sky Bank and um, used Polaris Bank as what they were used to, you know, ensure that the the, the, the shareholders don't completely lose their investment in former or the default Sky Bank. Um, Polaris Bank has come back to become a profitable bank, up to the tune of, I think, $28 billion. I think that is an impressive um, 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 result from a, from a bank that, you know, was labelled too big to fail and was on the path to failing. You know, so I think it's a success story. Um, in the body of the news, Amcon has also said that or they've been able to um, recover about 100 billion uh, within the space of the last one year. And since inception, they've recorded 1.3, 1.1 trillion naira uh, in debt. And I, I think that these things are, you know, essential because if you look at some of the debt profiles with the bank, you will find out that it's the so-called 1% of the 1% that seem to be in that bracket. And it's very, very important for I'm going to ensure that, you know, this money are not just, you know, 
gone to uh, frivolities or to some of them are genuine losses, business losses, but some of them are just, you know, careless losses. And those who are responsible have to, you know, um, um, they, the, the recoveries have to be made, especially with those who have assets that can help make um, those, those recoveries. So I, I think it's, um, it's, a, it's a good and impressive news from Africa. Okay, let's uh, take a look at the election uh, situation with INEC. INEC um, Edo Ondo polls must hold to avert constitutional crisis. Timetable out on June 1. Should we be conducting elections? Um, I don't think so. We are, we are facing um, a very strange, strange time in our world. We, some people have even said you will not witness this maybe again in another 100 or 1,000 years. So I think that, yes, INEC has said we are at the risk of a constitutional crisis if those um, elections don't hold. But having said that, we are also at the risk of, you know, a spread of a pandemic that we don't know how to handle. So I think that it's about time we find a solution. You know, we're not going to... Um, we're not going to um, kind of, the, you know, just to sp spite the eyes. Or I don't know. I don't know if I got that right. But if you understand what I'm saying, we're not going to say because we want to avoid a constitutional crisis, then we we'll put the 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 health of or the life of people at risk. Or we're going to say because we want to avoid a constitutional crisis, we disenfranchise the people because what will happen is the fear of COVID-19 is still out there, and the election should go on. We most likely we see a situation where there will be a lot and a lot of voter apathy. Even when we did not have a pandemic like COVID-19, there was voter uh, voters apathy. So what happens, you know, in a situation like this? So I think that it's important for you know INEC to call all the heads together. We are in a very strange situation, and let's find you know a way to solve it, um, um, to solve the problem as against you know because or as against putting the life of people at risk, which is like the most important thing. All right, Tubosu, thank you very much for sharing your thoughts and giving us some insight on the headlines this morning. Thank you for having me. And that's how we wrap things up at this hour on the newspaper review of the press returns same time tomorrow morning. My name is Felicity Ezewike, urging you to stay home and stay safe.